Yeah. Uh, so yesterday we talked about uh, what? Calculus. No. Be more specific. Yesterday we uh, forgot already. Numbers. Ooh, we talked Numbers. about proving Numbers. things. Proving what? Proving um, the square root of two is not a rational number. Okay. Perfect. So once we have a rational number then we put them all together, all the rational and irrational all together, and we have a new set. And that set is? Okay, so that includes strange things like this pi, or ye, or square root of two, or nice things, right? It's irrational numbers. Yeah. So, uh, then, for a while, people thought that's all the number there are. That makes sense. And until someone finds something very strange. Because, yeah. How do you just square root of negative 1? Can you imagine the first person who tried the yeah. Because what happens here is we know that if we take a number and say this is an x, if we square, square it, this number, if this is a real number, when we square it, this one is always greater than zero. Always. But if we square this, that's supposed to give us oh, no. negative one. So, so clearly this number is something else. It's not a real number. So this is a call that they give a name for imaginary number. And the reason they call it imaginary is because people thought there's actually no use for it. Just numbers, kind of just a math game. Okay, so we so we use i or j to to denote to write the negative uh, square root of negative one. So for a long time, people thought that's it. We just that's the game. There's no use for it until uh, when people studying uh, uh, e uh, electricity, studying e electri e uh, electrical circuits, they find that actually it's quite useful. And then because of that, we have, nowadays, we have the computers and uh, cell phones and all that. So even though this number is, we do not have that number uh, in real life, but as a mathematical abstraction, and that works out very well as a tool. So solve a lot of problems. Uh, so now, once we have this, then we get to another new set. That set is called? Imaginary. Which includes both real and imaginary. All numbers. Real. What is the name for? Start with C. <laughs> C-O-N. Computer. No. Nope. Pause it. No. Nope. Complex. Complex number. Yay. Okay. So we see that the our number set then grows bigger and bigger. Okay, so we start with counting number. Counting numbers. Then we got whole number. And from whole number we have integers. integers. And from that we have rational. Rational. So each time we go bigger. And then irrational. Huh? Real. Real. So each set becomes bigger. Real includes rational and irrational. And not the one is complex. And as far as we go, so that's all the number sets we have. Okay. That's about number uh, concern. So that's kind of pretty much a quick overview of those numbers, okay? And now we actually got into something. But are there only infinite? Huh? Yes. Are there only infinite um, real numbers, or are there infinite numbers? Like, are there infinite number sets? Yes. So there's way more we just haven't found them yet. Huh? I mean, do we well, have an infinite number of number sets? Yeah, you could. You could have a different number sets. So well, as far as the number goes, we only have those. But you can group them together and form. Oh, no, no, no. Like categories. Like, 
categories. That's it. That's Once we get a complex number, that's it. So that's is there any chance goes. of us finding more? Don't know. There could be. So <laughs> there is a chance of us finding more. Well, you always have the chance. Okay. Yeah, in math, because once we become abstractions, then we can create something which is not in this life, something new. And actually, because of math, we can do a, a lot of things which is physically impossible. And uh, so one thing, uh, you guys know, so the, 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 the cell phone communications, right? And uh, we start from, like, when you uh, receive radios, you have different frequencies. So that means the, 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 uh, the radio waves has to occupy certain, we call, spectrum. So therefore, they don't interfere with each other. So if you jam two uh, radio uh, signals into the same frequency, then you won't be able to figure out what it is, just jam it up, right? So that's basically the physics. But uh, once they get to the cell phone, com uh, cell phone communication, like CDMA, you guys heard that, right? Nope. Nope. CDMA, that's your uh, kind of the uh, earlier generation of LTE. LTE is the latest 4G. Before that is CDMA. So what they did is that instead, they can actually send the uh, different signals in the same spectrum. Quantum physics. Not quantum physics, no. <laughs> no, but they'll be able to decode it and uh, using mathematics. So even though if you just hear it, you hear nothing, but they can decode it and figure out who, which is which. So that's kind of an uh, example that once you can do math, into mathematics, then they'll do a lot of things which is physically impossible. But mathematically is possible, so you can do something like that. So basically what we have, the cell phones we have, a lot of things is um, only uh, by using mathematics we can be able to figure out. Okay. Uh, another thing is, uh, you guys heard about uh, uh, when you're trying to uh, send a secure uh, message, you have you can uh, you can encode it, and the other person can decode it, right? And there is a scheme. It's called the public key. So public key is basically is very secure. It's basically uh, in in terms of decoding, you guys know what the key is, right? So basically, you need the key to decode the message. You, you receive encoding, encoded message, but you need to use the keys to decode it. So the most secure way is that it's called public key. So basically, uh, I give that key to you, then you can send that to me. Everybody know the public key, but you need a private key to decode it. So that way, I give you public keys and everybody can send me a message, but only I can decode it. Okay, so other people even know the public key, they cannot decode it. They can just use that to send me a message, but only I can decode it. The same thing, if you want me to send a message, you give me your public key, then I encode the message, but only you can decode it. So this is what the most advanced uh, encoding decoding goes. It's not, uh, it's purely based on mathematics. and. Uh, theoretically, people can break the code, but practically, you take years to break it. So therefore, there's no practical use. So you basically cannot decode it, because I change the public key pretty often. So people won't be able to decode it. But that's all when you get to mathematics. But when those ma when they, mathematicians, when they actually came up with those math operations, those strange uh, symbols, and how do they play with it, then they didn't know what, what, what to use. They just purely for their curiosity. It's only later on, uh, a lot of times, like hundreds of years later, that people figure out, oh, we can use this. And that actually turns out to be very useful. So, uh, kind of like that. Uh, this, we know we have number line here, right? This, every knows, right? And so if we put two, together, but one is perpendicular to 
So we got this. This is called Cartesian graph. Cartesian Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, so this actually was invented by a guy called Rene uh, Relay. I don't know how to really pronounce it, so it could be Relay this card or Relay this card. Okay. He's talking about Rene. Yeah. Rene. Huh? Rene is a good name for a boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He actually was a French. And, uh, and he, when he went to school, uh, he went to the uh, a, a Catholic private school. And because he was physically weak, and uh, his teachers allowed him to stay in bed much longer than his friends. Uh, so, so even though he missed a lot of classes, but he made it up. So pretty much through his old school years, he always, uh, you know, stayed b bad a lot longer than other people, uh, which is kind of nice, isn't it? Okay. So I know that there is some schools experimenting with, which allow teenagers to start school an hour later. Up north in Carmel. Really? Are they doing yeah, that? Doing yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. People are doing some. That's fun, you know, yeah. Just to see. Okay. Anyway, so so he actually got into the habit, kind of staying bad, uh, much longer. Uh, so he got up actually quite late. But that means he's not thinking. He always think. This is a guy who actually had this famous uh, philosophical statement. Some of you probably you probably know. It starts with, "I think, therefore, I am." That's the guy. I think, therefore, I am. So basically he's saying, like, how do I know I exist? It's because I think. And that make me kind of human. Okay. Um, so the story, uh, there's one story on how he discovered this, how he invented his this, uh, Cotillian system, is uh, that one day he was, of course, lying in the bed. Uh, he saw a fly on the ceiling. And then the fly was walking along the ceiling. And he's trying to figure out, how do I describe this to someone? How do I express that so some people can understand? Remember the three stages of development? First stage is kind of like the elementary school. First stage is memorization. Second stage, logic, rational thinking. Third stage. Application. No. Expression. 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 So he will think about how he can describe it to somebody else. How he can describe the, 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 the path the fly uh, had taken. So he came out with this system. He said that if I have put those two long lines here, then I can say the fly was here, which is one, two, right? After some time, the fly went to here, negative two, three. So therefore, it went this way. Now, he said, I can describe to people how the fly walked. OK, so that's, that's sto one of the stories. Oh, Dad, we don't know for no, sure. That's three negative two. Oh, three negative two. You're right. That's at least right. <laughs> Thank you. OK. So, he didn't, thought too much, he didn't think too much about it. I mean, it's kind of nice, you know, nice game, whatever, nice puzzle for him to solve or something you can play. It's only much later people find out actually it's very useful. And because of this, we have a new geometry. A new kind of geometry, which is called analytic geometry. Okay, remember uh, the classic geometry only deal with the shape and size. They don't care where that thing is, right? When you're doing geometry, you, you just 
draw it out. We don't care. A square is a square, doesn't matter where it is. And which is called what? Congruency, right? Remember that? That's a triangle. Is, and another triangle, even they are in a different place, as long as if you put them together, they match, then that's congruent. So in classic geometry, we don't care about where that thing is. But in analytic geometry, not only we care about size, shape, we also want to know where it is. So if you have a triangle here, then I can describe it. All we need to do is three points. Then I can describe this triangle to you. If I tell you the three points, you'll be able to grab it. So make sure that we have the communication, right? We understand each other. So with that, we got a new uh, branch of mathematics called analytic geometry. And because of that, then we'll be able to do calculus. So basically, without this, there is no calculus. So even though it seems very humble beginning, but really fundamental. OK. Now, here we got into uh, the things you did to you. So if someone can pass it. Remember, we can go over this. So the first thing is about distance. Finding distance between two points. So we have two points here. We're trying to find the distance. Okay. Now with our Cartesian system, let's say we got something like that. And this is our, this is a negative 2, this is 2, this is 1, and this is, let's say, this is a 4. So this is 2, 4, and this is negative 2, 1. We got these two points, P and Q. Okay, so, so now in order to find the distance, uh, okay. In order to find that distance, all I need to know is this. And this point will be two and one. that in order to find the distance of this, all we need to know is the distance on this side and the distance on this side, right? We're going to use what kind, what theorem? Pythagorean. Pythagorean theorem, right? So what's the distance between these two points? Four. Is what? It's 2 minus negative 2, right? Right? The distance on the x-axis is 2 minus negative 2 give us 4. And this distance? 4 minus 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. So all we need to do is 4 squared plus 3 squared and the square root of that. Right? That's our distance. Right? Pretty good? So basically it is give us 16 plus 9 equals 25 equals 5, right? That's the famous one, right? That's a 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, that triplet. Okay. So that's how to find it, using the theorem, but we put it into the Cartesian system. So with this, then we'll be able to come up with a formula. So the formula we have Let's say we got something here, these two points. Okay. We start here is x1 sub 1, y sub 1. Remember we're doing algebra, right? We use the symbols. It's just any point on here. 
On this one, x2 by sub 2, right? Okay, if, uh, if you have questions, just ask, okay? This give us x sub 2 and y sub 1, right? Okay, so now we are going to use the Pythagorean theorem. First of all, what is the distance from here to here? Which is on the x axis. What's the distance? x2 minus x1. Will be x2 minus x1, right? So if you're not quite sure, look at this. Now, what's the distance between here and here? Yeah. 2 minus 0, right? And what's the distance from here to here? 2 minus negative 2 give us 4, right? So the distance is always one point minus the other, right? One coordinate minus the other. So therefore, this distance, let's say this is the A, this is our B, this is our C, okay? So our A then is what? A is... Anyone? What's A? What's the distance of that? X2 minus X1? X sub 2 minus X sub 1, right? This point minus that point, right? We could on that one. Now what is our B? From here to here. Y sub 2 minus y sub 1, right? So therefore our distance between these two points, we write like this. Distance between P and Q, that's what? Square root of Pythagorean theorem, right? A squared plus B squared, which is what? X sub 2 minus X sub 1 squared plus Y sub 2 minus Y sub 1 squared, right? We good on this one? So that's where our uh, distance formula comes from. It's basically a, a simple Pythagorean theorem, but put out that on the XY coordinate. Okay, we good on this one? Yes? All right. So you'll be able to do that problem. So now we also know another uh, formula. It's called middle point formula. Where did that come from? OK. Let's see. If this is a middle point, we call this xm, ym. So if this is a point, then if you project to this side, this point, this should be the middle between these two. And this should be middle between these two. Okay. So how do we find the point right in the middle? Like say, how do we find the point here between these two? What do we do? Average zero. Two plus zero divided by two, right? If we want to find the middle point here, what do we do? Two add negative two divided by two, right? So therefore, this x sub m is what? Is what? Remember, when we have the middle, just add these two points divided by two, right? So what do we have? X two minus x one over two. No, no. Sorry, plus x one. One over two, over two right? The same thing for y. What do we have? Y two plus y one over two, right? So that's our uh, so that's our middle point formula come from, which is actually quite simple, isn't it? Right? If you look at it, actually quite simple. And uh, last question: On here, the distance formula does the order make any difference? No. Which one go first? Huh? No. Doesn't right? So if you look here, if you go from here to here, is that the same distance as you go from here back to here? 
same distance. So therefore, the order doesn't matter. You could write like a x sub 1 minus x sub 2, right? So that really doesn't matter. OK, so that's basically, uh, yep, I'm happy for today.